This is our last Thanksgiving sermon for the month, okay? And uh, if you notice, these Thanksgiving sermons are sort of like out of the ordinary, a little bit, you know? And you may think this one is too, but that that's okay. Uh, I should read Ezekiel chapter uh, 16, verses 1 through 5. Uh, I need to preface this, okay? I want to preface this, uh, this reading, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, because what's in the reading, we try to be careful with a mixed group of people, and we have some younger, younger people and things, so we try to uh, be careful. Uh, so I want to preface the reading that there's nothing Im- immoral uh, and there's or, or nothing perverted by or of God in how God paints this vivid picture with words used to present his case before his people who thoughtlessly... And without being thankful, they had abandoned him. And the people that he's addressing through the prophet Ezekiel and their abandonment of their God by the Israelites, uh, they understood very well the Near Eastern 500 B.C. word expressions God is using in the picture that he's painting. I think you can too, to make his point with his people. That that in abandoning him, they have committed spiritual adultery after he had cared for them, loved them, provided for them. You'll see that in the text. And again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, Cause Jerusalem to know her abominations and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is in the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and who's that? Who is that? Who's he talking about? Anybody know? Yeah, thank you, Abraham. And thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity in in the day that thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee, thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Left in the open field to die. Ancient civilizations did that with babies that were not wanted. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, and I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. And I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments, Thy breasts are fashioned or come to maturity, the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, the people of God, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was uh, the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. The Jewish people became the people of God. Then I washed thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, and girded thee about with fine linen, and covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put my bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus thou was decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work, and thou didst thee fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceedingly beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Talking about Israel, pictured as a beautiful woman now, a mature, beautiful young woman. And thy renown went uh, forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and played the harlot because of thy renown and pourest out thy fornication on everyone that passed by his 
it was. Lord, I pray you bless this reading of the Word of God to us this morning. It's a, it's a little unusual, but it is in the Scriptures, uh, and we usually don't focus on these type of portions in a, in, a, in, a, in a preaching time like this, but we pray that you would honor your Word. We pray that you'd help us to be attentive and receptive to what you have for us from your Word. And we pray that uh, something here today, Holy Spirit, you would take and apply it to our lives that, that it would, it, it would, it help us to, to be, to be what God asks of us this day. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. So now that I've read the text, I did a little, uh, uh, introduction to the text. Okay. I would like to do the text this way, this way, and kind of condense what you've heard and make it maybe make a little more sense to you. Okay. In their beginning, the Jewish people, and he goes all the way back to Abraham, in the beginning, in the beginning, okay, as, as this nation, uh, this people become a nation, begin to grow, begin to prosper, become a kingdom and of, of notoriety in, uh, in that area of the world. It says, in their beginning, they were naked and they were helpless and they were hopeless and left to to whatever would befall them, they would probably have died. They were naked and nothing, and they had nothing. But what you read here is this, that, that, that God stepped in to their sad and sorry and desperate state and made them his own. That's what you're reading here in the text. And in that, what, what God did for the, for the, for the, uh, uh, the fathers of, of the Jewish people, and then the Jewish people, and then to grow them as a kingdom, as a nation, Jerusalem as their capital, and they became prosperous, beautiful, desirable. God gave them, God gave them privilege. They were naked, had nothing, were nothing, but God stepped in and made the Jewish people his own. Nobody else helped them. Nobody else cared for them. Nobody even cared if they lived or died. It didn't matter, but God did. And he stepped in and cared for them. And, they, and, he, and he gave them privilege. Okay. God became their God. He gave them privilege. He gave them, from the text you can see, provision. He gave them protection. He gave them his presence. He gave them his, his power to prosper and succeed, grow and mature into a thing of beauty. And God gave them also his promise of love. in his actions, and with his patience with them, and how he cared for them. But what you have here, when we get near the end of the reading, is that they, they had abandoned him after God did all this for them. Their own fame, their own beauty, became a stumbling stone, stumbling block to them as they were more concerned about self and pursued all other nations to the abandonment of their God who had stepped in and rescued them and cared for them. What they had done, they, they had abandoned God. What we, that's what we read in the text. They had become uh, uh, careless and they had become thoughtless about him about God. Consequently, uh, there was no thought given uh, of, of being of being thankful to him. For when in their desperate estate, God stepped in and rescued and revived them and remained faithful to them, but they abandoned him for others. That's why the, it talks about adultery and fornication, that, that, that they abandoned the one true God who loved them and cared for them, made a covenant with them, they walked away.
And, and with this, you find out that, that, that abandonment has, has connections, uh, 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 to, to their thought life, to their inner man. And, and I have to tell you this, listen, uh, this, this abandonment in part because they were unthankful to God for what he had done for them, who he was to them, to what he had done for them. You can read about all this in Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 22 and verse 25, that, that what happens, it's, it's interesting, when, uh, when uh, uh, the, the steps that people take when they, they abandon God and are more concerned about all of God's creation instead of the creator God himself, who's loved them and cared for them and, 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 and demonstrated his love and care of them and concern for them as, as part of his creation and a part of his offer of salvation. And what happens, it says this, it says this, what happens there, their thought life becomes dark and because they have become unthankful to God. And then all these other sinful things happen because people, people do not, do not think about God. They're not thankful toward God. Therefore, what they do, they begin to step away and abandon God. And that's what happened with the Israelites. You know, you think about, think about them and what's in the text. They, like us, we were naked. We were naked. We were nothing. And we had nothing. We had no hope for the future. But God stepped into each one of our lives. He did. He stepped into our lives. He made us his own. We have now become the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100 tells us that. And we have become the ch- his children by adoption into the family of God. And in that, just like with the Israelites, in that God has given us privilege as being his children, belonging to him, being adopted into his family. God has given us privilege. God has given us provision. God has uh, given us his protection, his presence, his power, and God has also given us his promise of love. And in that promise of love, he says, now I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 5. And I thought, do we, do we give any, do we give any thought to being thankful toward him for his mercy and his grace and his faithfulness to us? So I want you to remember this, that, that being, being unthankful, being thoughtless and reckless and being, and what happens in the end with that, you, you, your, your thought life is out somewhere else. Listen, what, what happens then you become unthankful when you become unthankful toward God. Even though he's done all this for you, he stepped into your life in a marvelous and tremendous way and transformed your life and how you live and what your hope is for now and the future. But if you're unthankful, you run the risk of abandoning him for others and other things. Even though he is the one who rescued you, who saved you, who nurtures you and cares for you. You know what? Uh, I've never told the story uh, in all my time here uh, because it happened during my time here, but not with somebody in the congregation here. So if you're trying to figure out who this is, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, you're not going. You would never know anyway. But this is a true story. I witnessed. Uh, 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 I was a witness to a young person being told he was adopted when he was a very young child, and that young person, uh, when that was revealed to them, uh, revealed to that person by by, by parents. Okay, uh, uh, that young person flipped out. The person was in, in their teens, uh, uh, flipped out into a raging episode of cursing and swearing and yelling, including many unkind words, many critical words, and many very hurtful words and terrible accusations against his adopted parents. And even went as far as, as claiming that they weren't that young person's mother and father. And they attempted, especially the mother, attempted to explain to that that, that young person that that wasn't so and and tried to, you know, tried to mediate something and slow this all down and, you know, let the young person take it in and, and, and think about this for a little bit. 
But the young person just continued to scream and get louder and louder and yelled at them and yelled over them when they tried to talk to the young person. And I was starting to get angry. Yeah. You know, because because of my past, and you know, I'm adopted by my stepdad, and so th- there's some things, and and I I I I have some personal things of appreciation. I just, and it was so sad that they, uh, you know, these people who were this young person's adopted parents, that they had stepped into that young child's life, just like God stepped into the young life of what would become the Jewish nation and kingdom. And just like God stepped into your life when you were hopeless and, and needy, and needed someone to love you, God himself, and to save you. Listen, they stepped into that young person's life, that young child, very young child's life, and made that young child their very own. When that child was, in a sense, naked and nothing and had nothing, They gave that child by bringing that child into their home and making that child their own. They gave that child all the privilege of a natural born son or daughter. They gave that child provision over and over again and protection. They gave that child their presence, their very presence, just the fact of their presence there with that child. They gave that child, you know, the power or the strength or the courage uh, to grow and develop and to live a live a, a, a decent life. And, and uh, they gave that young child a promise of their love. But that young person wasn't thinking like that. And in being incredibly reckless with their thought life, they were not being thankful. They were not being thankful that these people had stepped in and made that young person their very own. When that young child was abandoned, when that young child was left to or for whatever. And being unthankful that that young person was, in a sense, actually threatening them to what? Abandon them. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to, uh, uh, I'd like to go to Colossians chapter 3, if I could, in my Bible for just a few minutes. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 24. And, and I want to read you some of these verses. Just listen to them. You don't, you don't have to turn there if you don't want to. Colossians 3, 12. It says, put on therefore as elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye and above all these things put on put on charity or love which is the bond of perfectness or maturity in your christian faith and let the peace of god rule in your hearts to which also ye are called in one body and what and what and be ye thankful be thankful don't say say thank you you know when i was growing up with the big thing was make sure you say thank you you know, and you ask, and if you receive something, you say thank you. But but here, it's not say thank you. It says be thankful internally in your being, in your spirit, in your mind. Be thankful. Then it goes on about letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly in verse number sixteen, and uh, and then verse seventeen. And whatsoever you do, do all uh, uh, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. What giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And then it goes on about wives submitting yourselves to your own husbands. And if I start talking about those kind of things, you'll lose track of everything else. Husbands, love your wives. Don't be bitter against them. Children, children. Hi, children. It says in here, it says, obey your parents. Yikes, man. Yeah, it's there. You know, Father, fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Servants, obey your masters. And whatever you do, do it heartily to the Lord, not unto men. Knowing the Lord, you're going to receive a reward of the inheritance because you serve Christ. But in verse 15, in the middle of all this, it says, 
It says what? It says what? It says, does they say thank you? It doesn't say write a thank you note. It doesn't say shoot them an email and tell them thanks. It says be thankful. Be thankful. You know what? You need to be thankful for this. When we think about our text, and then you think about you you think about what the Lord has done for us in stepping into our lives, stepping into the life of the Jewish people, then stepping into the life of our lives, and then about uh, these these adoptive parents who stepped into the life of this this young child. Listen, you want to be thankful for the people who have stepped into your life by the providence of God. That's right. Now, I've often thought this, because it might still be the case, but I often thought this, you know, that, that the Christian people that invested themselves in me through the years, I, I was, I was like, I wasn't wicked bad, I was just ornery. That's the word, ornery. Okay? You know, and, and, and always one step over the boundary or one step over the rule or whatever. And, and I was like that all the time. It's just, just, just like, couldn't help it. It, it, might, it was probably my mother and father's fault. But anyway, listen, I was like that all the time. And I'm, and I'm sure some of the times when I was sitting in Sunday school class, I used to get badges for attendance and stars in my little book. And, uh, but I couldn't remember, I could never tell you a thing I learned in cl- Sunday school class, youth group, or in church. I couldn't tell you one thing the pastor ever said when I was in, in service. Because I was preoccupied. Because me, I just want to have fun. And uh, uh, sometimes, you know, it was over the boundaries. But I'm sure as they ministered to me, they thought, what a lost cause. And there were some people when I tried to tell them, you know, I, I, I was called to preach. I got to go do this other thing. I got to stop what I'm doing here, and, you know, with other stuff. And I got, I got to go. They're like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, and I think about those people. They persevered. They put up with me. I thought I was putting up with them. No, they put up with me for years and years and years. And even though I don't remember anything, hardly anything, because because I was occupied with just wanting to have fun. Okay, it mattered that they stepped into my life. It mattered that that they didn't give up. It mattered that they did this. They did this. For me, because of him. And often now, now that I'm like the ripe old age of 65, oh, how did that happen? But I, I told somebody the other day, I'm a card car, I'm a car carrying, I'm a Medicare card carrying person now, even though I don't use it yet, because I stand on principle. I'm too young to use it yet, you know. So, so now I think about those people. And most of them are up there now. You know, I'm grateful. They invested themselves in me because I look like a loser. You know, and now I regret, whoop, I'm getting, now I regret I, I never told them thanks. I, I never showed appreciation in my being, of my countenance, my attitude or anything. To my shame, but but now I think I'm thankful. I tell God I'm thankful for these people that invested in me. Some of them I can remember their names, and you know, and my mom, relatives, school. It says be thankful. You know what? In my memory, because I was thoughtless and careless, I'll tell you what I wasn't very thankful. And in a sense, in my mind, you know, in my life, I abandoned them. You know, I, I, I tried to amend my ways along the way and be thankful to God and others. And, and, and in that, you know, they're, they're in your thoughts. And if they're still with us, they're still with me. I, I try my best to be thankful and what? Not abandon them. Because they invested themselves in me. They didn't have to do that, but they did. They gave me privilege. 
They provided things for me. You know, they, they promised me their love. They, they stayed at it, you know. We ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful for the people who have stepped into your life by the providence of God. That's the providence of God when these people step into our lives to do these things like this, who have invested into your life in so many, so many meaningful and helpful ways. Think on these people. Think on these people. You know what they are? They're actually angels sent by God as part of your privilege, as part of your provision, your protection, as part of his presence in your life, as part of his power, and as part of his promise of love that he keeps to you. They are. They really are. But when you're self-absorbed, because of how wonderful you think you are, just like the Israelites, you know. You have a tendency to, to be thoughtless of these people who have invested in you because it's all about you. Where you're at, how spectacular you are, what you've accomplished, attained, achieved, and uh, how popular you are, or whatever, what people think of you, how great you are, whatever it is. And and if you're like that and you're, you're not thoughtless because the life becomes about you, uh, uh, you know, you won't be you won't be thankful. You won't be thankful. And just as with God, it will be easier to abandon them. Those people who invested in you. It'll be easier to dismiss them from your life. And when you do that, I have to tell you, just like the Israelites, something else will fill that void that's in your thought, thoughtlessness, in your lack of gratitude. And you need to watch out if that happens. So I'd say this to you, and I'm not scolding you, I'm challenging you as the last Thanksgiving sermon of the, of the season to be thankful. It, it's, a, it's an attitude, it's a disposition, it's from your inner man. I'm a, I'm a grateful person toward God who stepped into your life when you were nothing. He said, I was something before God. And, well, you still got a problem, man, if you think like that. You're a hopeless undone on your way to hell. You're outside the family of God you're not a child of light, you know, and, 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 and all these other things. And God changed all that in a blink of an eye when you trusted Christ as your Savior and adopted you and made you his own and promised you his love and his care. So be thankful. Be thankful. Very often you pray, you say, God, help me with this, help me with that. Will you please this with that and all these kind of things? And you have to understand a lot of times God doesn't drop like a care package out of heaven through a parachute. You know, it doesn't come down to earth that way. It shows up by the way of other people stepping into your life at points in time. So be thankful for them. They're part of God's providential care of you, answers to prayer. Be thankful. You know, we need to realize that none of us are a self-made person. We're not. And even though you have a personal responsibility and you put your energy and time and talents toward whatever to accomplish something, and that's good and that's right and that's noble, God expects that. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but listen, we, we need input along the way, all the way. We do. So none of us are a self-made person. Many, have, many people have stepped into your life. As a part, as a part of the goodness of God to you. When it says the goodness of God follows you all the days of your life in Psalm 23, verse number six, it's, it's not just, uh, uh, things, it's people too. I'd like you to recognize this and I'd like you to give it thought. And it will humble you and help you 
to be a thankful person. A thankful person. It will also help you keep their company. And it will do something else. When you realize the value of what we're talking about this morning and being thankful and you're thinking about this, that it will help you to step into other people's lives as a demonstration of God's goodness to them as a demonstration of God's love and promises and provision to others. That then you too can be somebody else's angel. Why? Because you haven't been reckless and careless with your thought life. You realize about God who stepped into your life, invested into you and others that God has sent. You think about that. You appreciate what they've given what they've sacrificed and what they've done. And in that, I'll tell you what, it'll, 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 it'll sort of like challenge you to do that for somebody else. We're going to have the singers come up. Uh, there's just one or two other things I want to say is this. And I'll tell you what, and you need to use discernment about some things. But I'll tell you what, you're like me. I've stepped into people's lives and said, oh my goodness, what a disaster. This is hopeless. They're hopeless. They're insane. This ain't never going to work. All those kind of things, you know. But you know what? You never know. You know why you never know? Because there's a God who works miracles, high miracles in people's lives. I, you know, and maybe I, I don't do anything for Tony's confidence in me, but a lot of times I tell her, listen, this is way beyond me. This is a God thing, man. I, I, God's got to do some stuff. You know, God's got to step into people's lives because, because certain things just take the step of God. Yeah. I, I, I got incredible limitations and I, and I, I vent to her. So about my limitations and I realize that. And even in a little church, you, you, you folks got, got more need than I can ever Come close to meeting. But God can do it. So even though I step in, you know, but there were other things that God God does. So as you step into people's lives and you think, oh my goodness, what have I just done? <laughs> you know, and this is going nowhere. This is a waste of time. Why did I ever? Oh, these people are drive me crazy. I don't say that to Tony about you. And I don't. She'll tell you, I hardly ever complain about church people. I love you guys. Okay? And, and I'm careful. I, I, and you can even ask my kids. I, and they'll tell you, you know, because a, a lot of times at pastor's houses, you know, who's, who's roasted for the afternoon and, and sits at dinner. You know, all the church people that are just, I, I never did that. But there are things that, that, and people that you think, if I invest, if I do this, I'm thankful and I want to reach out and you, you're, you're like, this, this ain't nothing going to happen here, man. You never know what God will do. Do you? Yeah. Think about your own life, what God's done for you. So I'd say this to you. Israel was nothing, naked nothing and had nothing, and God stepped in. God did all these marvelous, wonderful things for Israel. Pictured in the end as a beautiful woman who, not being thoughtful and not being thankful, abandoned their God. You know? God stepped into your life when you were nothing and gave you life, and gave it abundantly and made his covenant with you of love. How can you abandon him? Think, will you? Think what he's invested into you. And what? And be, be happy to be thankful that God did this for you. And will you please 
Be thankful to the people that care about you, that love you, that invest their time and their energy, they sacrifice, they invest into you. That's part of God's goodness to you. That's part of God's promise to you. Think about them, appreciate them. You know, you, then you can say so, so and show so to them and appreciate them. Be thankful toward them. Don't abandon them. Let them see some of that appreciation. Don't abandon them for something you think is better. Lord, I pray you'd help us what we've heard today. And as we come to the conclusion about Thanksgiving sermons, and I just pray you'd help us to be thankful people. Be thankful people. We will be thankful people if we will be thoughtful about your mercy and your grace and your love demonstrated to us over and over again. We're thankful you stepped into our lives. You promised us and privileged us and provide for us and your power and presence, we're so grateful. Help us not to be thoughtless, careless, reckless. Help us to be thoughtful people. Help us to have eyes to see what you have done for us. And in that, help us to be thankful. And help us not to do what Israel did, abandon their God. Help us appreciate the people that loved us, invested in us, and still do. Uh, they may not be perfect. Of course they're not. And uh, they may have missed a few marks along the way trying to help us and care for us, but who hasn't? And we're difficult people anyway. Let's just confess it, you know. And uh, we're thankful for them. So as we have Thanksgiving dinner this week, we pray that you'd help us as we say grace and we think about, you know what? I want to be a thankful person. For all the goodness that God has showed me, his mercy and goodness, all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. Amen.